it, it's almost like we're going back to the beginning of equity investing, et cetera, right? In, in terms of uh, when people first started investing in companies, there was no such thing as liquidity preferences or shareholder yeah. rights, et cetera. Uh, but you actually had the bare instrument, yes, right? You, you know, did. You, you actually owned yep. your, um, your shares. And yeah. so we've almost come full circle to an extent just now in the digital world, yeah. right? And, and so how do you see uh, that ripple impact across Wall Street, right? If the retail investors are willing to do this without going through financial institutions, yep. does that force the financial institutions to, you know, kind of move in this direction as well? Or do you think that they can hold out? Oh, I, they're, they're going to be forced to move in this direction because they're just going to be disintermediated. Mm -hmm. And what's fascinating to me is that there are, there's a whole parallel infrastructure of, of Wall Street, right? There are structurers of these capital raises we call them ICOs but they can be security token offerings whatever you want to call it there it, there's a whole capital market that's that's yep. built up around around these products so um, you've got the, you've got the advisors you've got the exchanges you've got research firms that uh, that specialize in all of this and and Wall Street is going to get disintermediated by them and the thing that they cannot that Wall Street does not offer right now and frankly isn't set up very well to do it is to be able to build tech. You don't have mm -hmm. people who can design an ERC-20 token yep. and understand how to market a, 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 an ICO or, a, or, a, or an STO um, out to the investor universe. That's not something Wall Street can do. But I've had a number of, of companies talk to me about corporate coins, yep. corporate ERC-20 tokens. And I think it's very real. It, it's, um, as I've said in one of the Forbes.com pieces, uh, it, it, this is actually, I think, cheaper capital. It's it's securitization yep. by another name, and so for a company to go out and raise capital that way uh, is very rational. And and I think that they're going to find cheaper capital either for startups, mm -hmm. and we've seen that right the 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 um, the amount of VC investment in this industry uh, compared to the token investment in this industry. Um, you know, the tokens surpassed VC investment in in blockchain. 18 months ago, but now the whole token industry is is 30% of what VC, of traditional VC across the board, not yep. just blockchain, right? This is it's already happening. It's already disintermediating, and and it's 45% of the of, of the size of the IPOs in in the first quarter. Oh, sorry, in, sorry, in the second quarter, um, and 41% I think was the number in the first quarter. So it wasn't just a flash in the pan. It's, we've had six months of, you know, that this this token market has raised a very material amount of capital, institutional sized, and that is attracting um, companies to this market. I think we're gonna see, you know, more than just Kodak coin. Absolutely, well, it, it, and you know, I, I think a lot about like this power shift, right? So if you think of when uh, investing first started, the founders or owners of the business had a lot of the power. Yep. And so they would go to people and say, hey, give me money. You can have a claim on my cash flow. Yep. Um, over time, investors realized, hey, we have money. And so we have, we've got some leverage here. And they continued yeah. to kind of ratchet down on business owners or, or founders. Um, and now what we're seeing is a, a shift in power back to those founders and entrepreneurs, because what we're doing is on a global basis, you just open it up. And there's always an investor who's willing to take less egregious terms. Right. Uh, yeah, but I also think that that it is a trade a trade off. The market's actually been pretty good at weeding out the scams. Mm -hmm. Uh, so uh, you know that's one of the one of the benefits of crypto Twitter is that uh, you know people are pretty ruthless, ruthless <laughs> yeah, and uh, and and so if, if if it's just an outright scam, mm -hmm. um, so but I think there's a difference information because right? I think the detail here matters. So, so there's a difference between a scam yep. and let's say a an in, uh, a founder who says, look, when I raise capital, I'm looking for two things: yes. I'm looking for money and yep. I'm looking for help. Yeah, right, yep. and so. Uh, if I believe that um, there's an investor who will give me money and help, but the terms are erroneous, yes. right, or, or kind of egregious, yes. then I'm willing to open that up to a wider set of investors Absolutely. to find a better market equilibrium for what this round pricing should be. Absolutely, and I think one of the interesting things that comes out of that is that this is a big competitive threat to the state of Delaware. And having worked when I while I was at Symbiant, Symbiant, mm -hmm. uh, it was Symbiant's idea to go start the Delaware Blockchain Initiative. Mark Smith got that done before I got to Symbiant, and we were gung ho moving forward with the former governor. And then the incumbents came in and <laughs> uh, then threw sand in the wheels under the new governor. And, uh, and 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 here's the irony: 
based on what ICE just announced, that it's going to natively digital assets, it just takes away Delaware's competitive advantage. Yep. I don't see any reason why a company, a, 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 a startup would register in Delaware. Why? Because of exactly what you just talked about. They now have a capital markets alternative where they don't, ha they don't have to go and be a Delaware corporation where investors really are com most comfortable with the state of Delaware because the law is um, most uh, defined there. There's great case law. There's the yep. Delaware Chancery Court. All of those things fit the traditional corporate equity issuance and preferred share venture capital funding model. Mm -hmm. But now, if you can actually issue tokens, you're just going to have a very different looking balance sheet. You're just going to have a big contingent liability on your balance sheet, but it doesn't matter where you you organize as a company because you're not raising capital by selling equity. You're raising capital through this securitization type, secured financing type of vehicle, which means that Delaware law is not a competitive advantage at all. And I find that I, it's just disappointing. Delaware squandered its its uh, its huge head start. We're two and a half years after the announcement of the Delaware Blockchain Initiative, and of course they were working on it before it wasn't before Governor Markell yep. announced it at consensus in 2016. In uh, that was I think April, um, and uh, and and they are just maybe later this year I think going to have a prototype to consider. Uh, at the state of Delaware. So, I mean, it's just, it's, it's pretty clear what happened there. Yeah.